Hello, everyone. My name is Marcy Sanderson, and I'm Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Thank you for attending today's webcast, Terraforming the Cloud with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Resource Manager. We are very excited to be able to share with you how you can build and apply Terraform scripts using Resource Manager. If you have any questions during the workshop, please put your question in the Q&A area, and we will answer your questions as quickly as possible. Don't wait until the end. Go ahead and enter them into the Q&A as you um, have questions. The webcast it will be recorded today and will be made available shortly after the webcast concludes. Again, thank you for joining the webcast, Terraforming the Cloud with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Resource Manager. This webcast will be presented by Flavio Pereira, Senior Manager, Product Management at Oracle. At this point, I will turn it over to Flavio. All right, thanks. Thanks, Marcy. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, happy to be here and go over to this, uh, you know, almost an hour workshop, workshop of going through, showing a little bit about uh, Terraform and how you can actually use Terraform with OCI Resource Manager. Um, yeah, I do have a few uh, slides that I want to cover just to give a little bit of a background around infrastructure as code and, and talk about Terraform and Resource Manager. And then I'll actually go and show the console and how we can start building up uh, Terraform scripts uh, and how we can use those scripts to actually uh, execute it through a resource manager. So um, I just wanna set the stage, like I said, real quick. So infrastructure as a code, right? Um, basically, if, you, if you're trying to automate your uh, your environment, or if you're trying to create resources on, inside of the cloud or inside of OCI, uh, there's a few ways you can do. You can easily just go open up your web browser and start diving and creating resources, and you know identify the resources you need to create for your particular workload. Uh, and you can just go that and, and use the web browser to do it. So very very easy way to do it if you if you're dealing with a handful amount of resources uh, that, that you're creating, like five, 10 servers, uh, that should be, should be uh, you know, easy to do through the web browser. But once you start, you start scaling, when you want to increase the amount of resources you're creating, you're actually trying to put some automation behind of a process of a workload you're trying to deploy. Then when you start thinking about how am I gonna automate all that, uh, all that feature, or how am I gonna automate all that, that task actually, right? So that's how infra infrastructure as code came to place. Uh, it's basically a set of tools uh, that you can use to automate that process. You can easily tell how many resources you want to create, uh, what are the requirements for that particular resource, and then you can just uh, execute that code that will out automatically create that and instantiate it all, uh, that for you inside of, uh, inside of the OCI, right? Um, so with that, you can, of course, uh, repeat that task multiple times. You can have consistency across uh, the implementation because you can use one single source of information to actually create an automation, just repeat all that type of a creation uh, across across your, your cloud implementation. So it's it's very uh, easy to do and you can increase uh, what we call efficiency and, and reduce risk as well. So you can, you can make sure that everything you're doing is actually exactly the same way, exactly the same type of configuration that you decided when you create your initial script to automate that implementation, right? So with that, uh, as part of the, or the OCI um, platform, we partner up with HashCorp. So HashCorp is, is actually the company that we're partnering with to provide the automation uh, inside of OCI. So with that, we're using Terraform. So Terraform is the tool, is an open source tool that HashCorp um, on it and maintain. And then we use that Terraform to automate the, the process uh, for OCI, right? So basically that tool will, will give us all the ability to create these scripts and automated uh, the infrastructure and then allowing us to deploy uh, and create the infrastructure in these uh, automation uh, fashion ways, right? So think about Terraform is the tool to spin up your infrastructure while uh, you can integrate Terraform with what we call configuration management. So you can have 
Terraform integrated with Chef, with Ansible, to actually go along and do all the configuration inside of your, your application or your uh, infrastructure. So basically, you're spinning up the whole infrastructure with Terraform, and then you can handle this to another configuration management tool if you want to uh, allow you to do the configuration right, of, of the application. So that we, we, we decided to partner with this and, and you partner with Fetch Corp and use Terraform as our main source uh, of, of tool to, to do the automation. So here comes a little bit of a, some challenge uh, when using Terraform, uh, a standalone Terraform. What I mean by that is um, when using Terraform, you can install that binary, the Terraform binary on your own laptop, right? on your own machine. And then you can use that to create uh, your automation. So you're gonna build up your scripts, you're gonna build up your, your Terraform files, and then you're gonna execute locally on your machine uh, that Terraform, right? So when you use Terraform, Terraform creates a file that's called a state file. That state file is all the blueprint of your, uh, your infrastructure. Everything that Terraform will touch will actually execute will be placed inside of this, uh, this state file, right? And that state file will be, by default, is stored locally, right, on your machine. So if, you, if you're collaborating with other, other, uh, uh, other people, right, executing automation across your organization, uh, you wanna make sure that everyone has access to the same state file. So if you're changing the environment, if you're adding resources, if you're deleting resources, if you change some type of configuration uh, along this uh, automation process, you wanna make sure that everyone is updating and uh, checking all the chains inside of that same state file. There's a few ways you can do it. You can accomplish this using uh, on a standalone. You can have the state file, for example, what we call an object storage, and you can share this across your organization, uh, or you can use other tools to actually make sure that this that Terraform state file is actually shareable and everyone can download it and use uh, to avoid uh, people just stepping on the, on the, each other's toes, right? So that's some of the challenge. That's actually the main challenge with Terraform uh, using on what we call standalone Terraform uh, that can cause some conflicts when, you, when you're collaborating uh, with your organization, right? The other portion is the credential as well. So you wanna make sure that uh, everyone is contributing to the automation on your organization using Terraform. They have their credentials set up properly so they have the ability to create and destroy resources is, as, as part of the environment. They have ability to do that in a specific, uh, what we call compartment or uh, a specific tenancy if you have more than one tenancy to do it. So you have to control and manage those credentials, right? It's kind of become a little bit tricky because each, de each um, developer or uh, operator that actually is executing those tasks, those tasks, they will have to have their own set of credentials set up to get access to the environment, right? So we have to manage all of this. So um, with all that manage, management of standalone Terraform, we try to alleviate some of those uh, issues using resource manager, right? So how, how that's gonna help me actually. So resource manager is gonna help you on on the way you collaborate with the state file that we call through the stacks. So once you, once you start using resource manager, you, you're gonna notice that you can deploy your infrastructure using the resource manager instead of having Terraform installing locally on your machine. And inside of that stack, all the state file will be controlled by that particular stack. So you can share that stack across your organization and everyone that's, uh, you know, creating resources, the leading resources, to be able to see that stack, right? And then uh, use the same uh, state file that's available there. So everyone will know what's going on, what these stacks actually means and what these stacks actually apply uh, on your infrastructure. And then you have this uh, integration, this collaboration across across the board, right? Another, another advantage of using resource manager is the, the uh, the configuration that we can do, for example, uh, with source code repository. I can have a GitHub repo or a GitLab repo created 
and then everyone can contribute it to the to the repository uh, across my organization. And then uh, everyone can see the Terraform files, the scripts that we're creating right there. And then when I executed this text that it's connected through this, this repository, uh, that resource manager will pick up the chains from the repository to apply uh, on your environment. So very easy to set up this type of collaboration, right? And then the, the credential portion, now you start adopting the identity and access management portion of the cloud of the OCI to allow you to control who can have access to resource manager, who can actually deploy stacks, who can uh, uh, you know, delete or, or create resources. So you're gonna have all that uh, embedded inside of the identity and access management as part of the resource manager. So um, very easy, right? The resource manager workflow is, is very easy to actually do. You have three, three basically main steps. The first one is creating your Terraform files. The second one is creating the stack, and then you run, you're gonna run a job, right? So I'm gonna go and do a quick demo. I'm gonna show you like, uh, I'll, I'll show the whole life cycle, right? I'm gonna show you the Terraform files, how we built the Terraform files. We're gonna show how to connect this to a, a GitHub repo and then how we're gonna create a stack and how we're gonna run that job and just apply the resources uh, inside of OCI. So I'm gonna show these through them, but basically those three steps are, are the main uh, workflow you have to pay attention to when using resource manager, okay? So let me just jump to the demo. Um, then let me just go real quick and start doing the demo here. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna share my um, other screen. Give me one second. share. Okay. Hope you can see this, um, this screen, um, the browser uh, that I'm sharing here. Uh, so before I actually dive into the OCI console, right, and, and show you how do we're going to use resource manager uh, and all, all that information. So let's just stop, start with the first step, right? The first step is actually, okay, so where's my Terraform script files. Like, how do I actually set up these script files to uh, allow that automation to happen, right? And then I want to, I want to bring this up real quick. So I do have Visual Studio here. I have a couple of Terraform files that I created uh, before, so I can kind of show you a little bit what we're trying to do, what we're trying to automate, so you can understand how uh, the Terraform TF file works uh, in this situation, right? So. Let's just give an example here. Uh, what I'm gonna deploy is a very simple um, uh, architecture. It's just, it's just two web servers that will be uh, loaded with a load balancer in front of that web server, right? So very basic um, configuration. And uh, inside of those two web servers, I'm, I'm gonna have uh, Apache install with uh, you know, a sample of a, a, HT, a PHP uh, page up and running, uh, just showing you HTML, like how, how this uh, page is displayed, but very simple, right? And I'm gonna walk you through the files here in a moment, just to give an idea of what the effort you have to put in place to actually create those, those files, right? So first one that I start with is generally using uh, what we call variables.tf file, right? This is one file that I created. Uh, one point to note here is if you wanna create all your scripts in one single file, yes, you can do that, right? But this is not the recommended way. Uh, the idea is for everyone that actually looking your scripts and trying to understand you, what the automation you put in behind uh, it's, it's ideal that you can name those files, you can divide those files base, base, based on the infrastructure piece that you're creating, right? So as you can see here, I have uh, files that will be created a computing sense, file that will be created my load balancer, that will set up my network, uh, and then I have other extra files here that I'm, I'm gonna go in a minute here that you show what that is, right? But the first one, what we call is the variables.tf uh, file. So that file is just to handle all my uh, variables, what I'm gonna actually input as a user uh, through, through Terraform to say, 
uh, when you when I start deploying my uh, my compute resource or my network resource, what are the CIDR blocks that I want for that VCN? What are the shape that I want for that specific uh, compute resource? Right. Uh, that's how where I'm going to input those that information. I'm going to just add that information here. So if I have to walk through a little bit here on the file, the first portion. It's what we call OCI tenancy authentication and location. Here is, I'm going to tell resource manager to look for that OCI tenancy OCID for the region that I want to uh, create the, the, the resources, what a compartment, which compartment I'm going to use. And I'm also in injecting my SSH public key because I'm creating a compute instance. But that's pretty much what we call the OCI authentication side. Uh, you, as you're using resource manager, you don't have to worry about injecting the tenancy OCID, the region, uh, because everything is going to pick up from the console when I make a connection uh, with resource manager. Resource manager already understand that which region you are and what the tenancy you are and what compartment you want to deploy that specific uh, application, right? So um, here I'm just choosing the availability domain I want to deploy. My, my, my resources, right? I'm gonna create compute resources. I'm gonna deploy on availability domain one. I can change this through the workflow. I'm gonna show that in a moment, but basically the default is setting to one. Uh, I have the, my VCN variables. Uh, what is the CIDR block, like I mentioned? What is the DNS label that I wanna use? Uh, what is the OS image, right? What's the Oracle, uh, the Operating system image that I want to use. In this case, I'm using Oracle Linux uh, 7.8. Uh, what's the compute shape that I want to use? I'm using a VM standard E2 1 micro. It's just the, the, the minimum uh, instance with just one CPU uh, that I can uh, do a few testing uh, with my, my web server. Then the load balancer, I'm just telling the load balancer what's the max bandwidth that I want for my flexible load balancer. Uh, I wanted the, you know, the max to be 10 and the, the, the actual, sorry, the minimum to be 10 and the max to be 10 as well. So I'm just setting, setting the flexible load balancer to use 10 megabits per second uh, for that particular uh, flexible uh, shape, right? So this is the variable file. The next one I wanna show here is my data source. The data source is <clears throat> how I'm actually walking through the, uh, the account or my, or my tenancy to identify a few, uh, few information, right? I wanna, for example, pick up what are the availability domains available inside of my tenancy. If I have just one AD, that's gonna return that I have one AD, what's the, and what's the name of that particular availability domain. If I have three availability domains, that's gonna return to me the list of availability domains available in that particular tenancy. That's how I got this first portion here. Then I do have uh, uh, a list of uh, compute images for each part of my uh, tenancy. I'm just gonna go and, and look for that information uh, from here, right? So data source, uh, then I do have my network, uh, my VCN construct. So this is how I'm gonna create my VCN. I'm gonna create my VCN, I'm gonna put my solder block. Uh, I'm gonna create my internet gateway. I'm gonna create my public route table. Uh, and then I'm gonna create a subnet that's gonna go across uh, my availability domain. It's a regional subnet that I'm gonna create here, okay? Creating my secure lists, uh, adding some secure rules. I just wanna add that I have access to HTTP port right, port 80, I'm just gonna allow import 80 here and SSH as well as I wanna do an SSH to my compute uh, instances, right? So very uh, basic configuration. I'm not going through modules in terms of the form because you can actually create modules. You can, uh, you know, be a little bit more, I would say advanced type of, uh, uh, you know, configuration uh, on the Terraform side. I'm just showing you a little bit of a, you know, how you can construct a basic script just to launch your, uh, this, uh, this web server in this load balancer, okay? So network, then I do have my load balancer as well. So this is my load balancer, uh, the web servers that I'll be associating to 
to my load balancer. So we're going to have two web servers associated to it. Uh, and what are the rules of my load balancer? And load balancer is just very simple. I'm just listing on port 80. Uh, I'm not using SSL or not using any certification uh, here uh, for that particular uh, demonstration. But of course, you can add those as part of your uh, of your uh, configuration, right? But basically, this is this is just a standard load balancer listening on the port 80 uh, as of now. Okay, then. The compute portion, which is my compute um, resources, right? So this is the web01 server that I'm going to create. Uh, I'm going to put it on a specific availability domain, right? It depends on the variables that I set before. If I choose one or two or three, I'm going to add the compute resource there. Uh, which shape I'm going to select, which fault domain I want to add that particular uh, web server. Uh, what is the image, the operating system image that will be associated to it? My SSH key, right? Uh, and I do the same for my web server uh, zero 02, same kind of configuration. And then this is the portion where I inject the configuration of my web server. So once I provision the compute instance, I wanted to, a script to be executed as part of my cloud needed script to go there and install HTTP, D, uh, right, Apache, install PHP, then downloaded a, a, a configuration that I have already uh, published in object storage. I do have a like a HTML template page that I'm gonna get from object storage as well. I'm gonna uh, start my Apache uh, web server, uh, set up the, the firewall rules inside of the operating system and just restarted the web server. And so I can, uh, I can have my web server up and running. So this is just basically a script that will be executed on, on each web server once I, I launched uh, them, right? Okay. So another file here real quick is the output. So at the end of the execution of my code, I want to get the output of my load balancer. I want to get the output of my public IP of the load balancer that's going to display to me once I executed my script, right? And... There's one other file here that's not a Terraform file, uh, which is what we call a YAM file. Uh, that YAM file can be used as an interpretation for a resource manager. So resource manager can interpret, uh, uh, read that file, and then display the inputs that the user will have to do in a nice uh, graphical interface way. Right. So that's how you can construct uh, your stacks inside of a resource manager to give a little bit of appealing for the user that's deploying this uh, to say, hey, you will need to select, uh, for example, your SSH key. You can add your SSH key. Oh, I want to change my shape, which shape I want to add. So you can kind of give a little bit of a, um, a good look and feel to the user injecting the information through the screen, right? You can, you can hit in all of these if, if you don't want to use that. You can actually put everything under the variables and be automatically set up so you don't have the user to uh, actually do anything. But in this case, I'm just using that YAM file just, just to show you how you can control the ice cream inside of Resource Manager, right? Right, so this is my, this is my files, okay? Now that I walk through the files, uh, before I jump into the OCI console, what I want to do is I want to just dump everything inside of uh, my GitHub repo, right? So what I'm going to do here real quick, I'm going to switch to my GitHub account. I'm going to create a repository and I'm going to call this ORM sample uh, web. Okay, it's going to be public. I'm just going to add a readme file for that going to create this uh, repo, right? There's nothing there, empty. So I'm going to switch here real quick to my um, my terminal. If you can see this. And this is the location where I have the files, right? Uh, I was showing the Visual Studio. So I'm going to do a git clone, and I'm just going to clone that repository. Okay, so now I have a folder here called ORM sample app. So it's empty, right? There's nothing here. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna copy everything 
uh, from here, I'm going to copy the, all the PF files uh, to my this ORM simple web. And I'm going to copy the schema file to the ORM simple web folder. Now, if I go here, I have all the files inside of my um, my folder, my local GitHub Git, uh, repo uh, here. So I'm just going to push those files through my actually GitHub account. So I'm going to do a git add dash dash all git commit dash m. I'm going to say first commit. Okay, so it, it, it did a commit there. I'm just going to go git push. And that will push the files um, all the way over to the repo. So let's just refresh the page real quick here. And now I can see all the Terraform files uh, available on that, on that repository. Okay, so now let's make a connection. I want to make a connection from my GitHub account to resource manager inside of OCI. So let's just jump to, to the OCI console, right? So here's the OCI console. Uh, I, as I, I'm logged in as my, my user, uh, I'm using the Phoenix region. Uh, if I click here, I can change the regions that I want to deploy. So I'm going to use Phoenix because I'm using a, a free tier account. Uh, you can sign up for, for a free tier account as well. There is a always free tier. You can have these uh, resource, resources available for you for, you know, um, for the lifetime of the account. Uh, there is a, a minimal amount of resources you can use uh, to do that. And that, that actually, that Terraform files you can use uh, against, against those uh, limits. So what I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to the left side and I'm going to, find a resource manager uh, stack, right? And under resource manager stack, I don't have anything, right, uh, created here. So let's just jump real quick to configuration source providers. So I actually went ahead and created my GitHub uh, connection between uh, resource manager and my, my GitHub account, but it's very straightforward. It's very easy to do it. Uh, so if you create a, a configuration source provider, uh, I'm going to just show real quick here. All you're going to have to do is enter a name. Then you enter the server URL, which is github.com, HTTPS. And you have to enter your personal access token. So where do I get my personal access token? So on your GitHub account, uh, if you go on your profile settings, and there is this developer settings, there is personal access token. So you can generate a token and you can get the token provided here and just enter on, on this uh, portion and then make the connection. So very straightforward uh, to do it. So I have, I have this connection uh, set up here, right? So now uh, let's just create a stack, okay? Now that I have my GitHub account um, associated with, uh, with my OCI account, let's just create a stack. When I click create a stack, I have a few options under resource manager. I can, uh, I, I could zip all the files and just put the zip file here. I can um, read in configuration from my existing compartment if I want. But what I want to do is use the source code control system from GitHub and GitLab, right? So I'm going to click this one. And I'm going to select uh, the value here. I have a GitHub, right, created. And GitHub will give me all the repositories that I can actually use, right? Like I said, you could use a zip file if you want. You could use a sample solution that resource manager can provide it to you, uh, or you can read that from, from the repositories, right? So just give me a few seconds here that usually take a few seconds to read uh, the repos. There you go. So this is all the repositories that I have available on my GitHub account, right? Uh, I'm actually using the ORM sample uh, web. This is the same. If I go back here uh, on my repositories, right? And this is the ORM sample web uh, that I created. So I'm gonna use the main branch, 
right? Um, if I have multiple branches, I could select here. I'm gonna call this web, web app. And I'm gonna deploy this on my dev, dev environment compartment. And I'm using Terraform uh, 13. <clears throat> is that's the latest latest version of a Terraform. So let's just go next. So when I go next, as you can see, it's just pop up a screen to enter, enter uh, information. And that information, it's actually the YAM file acting, uh, acting as part of my stack to give you that nice uh, graphical interface to give, enter, for me to enter uh, information, right? So I want to select, uh, for example, my I want to select a load balancer and the minimal bandwidth that I want for my load balancer is 10 and the maximum is also 10. I just want to keep that that on the same uh, boundary of 10 megabits per second for my, my load balancer. Compute shape, I'm going to use E2 micro one. Uh, I could select other shapes, right? I'm going to use this one right here. Which availability domain I want to deploy? So my OCI account here, uh, as I'm using Phoenix, I have access to three availability domains, but only availability domain three in my in my account uh, is where I have the E2 one micro instances available. So I'm going to select availability domain three here, right? Uh, it's going to ask me to enter my SSH key, uh, and let me just grab one SSH key here, uh, real quick. Yeah, I just grab my uh, SSH key. This is my public SSH key. I'm gonna enter that information here so I can access my instances. Uh, the virtual cloud network configuration, I'm gonna leave the VCN as, as it is. So I could change if I wanna change to another cider block if I need to. So I'm gonna leave that as, as it is, right? So next. So just a review screen to make sure everything is, is fine. Uh, and I'm gonna click create, right? When I do click create, the stack is just available, it's active. So as you can see, it's showing it's connecting to my repository uh, under GitHub account. Um, I, didn't, I didn't apply this stack yet. I didn't perform any Terraform actions. Uh, I'm just, I just created this stack with that, that connection to GitHub, reading the information from my, my repo, right? Uh, I can check the variables that I, uh, I enter uh, here on the left side of the screen. It's gonna show uh, in a moment. Um, yeah, so and then I can perform, I can perform uh, some actions. So let's just do that. Let's just go here and do Terraform uh, plan. Let's just do a plan first. It's gonna call uh, web plan, plan job. Let's just do a plan. Okay, so when I do a plan job, Let's see how that's gonna, gonna show. It's gonna show me in a few minutes here, the plan execution uh, from Terraform. You can see it turned from, from uh, green to in progress. And then we start seeing some log information here on the screen, right? Uh, it's just going over to my plan of execution of Terraform, just validating my files, make sure everything is in place. So I'm gonna create a web servers, right? Like I was showing on the scripts, the load balancer, the compute resources. And yeah, okay, so it finished the, the plan, right? So if I scroll down all the way to the end, right? Cause this is just giving me information like what are you creating? This is what you're creating, right? And if you go all the way to the end, uh, it's gonna tell me, okay, your plan is to add 12 resources, right? As part of your scripts. Nothing's gonna change, nothing to destroy. So you're gonna add 12 resources, right? I didn't add anything. I just run a plan job, which means go over to my files, make sure everything is fine. Uh, and that, that I can actually execute that plan. Now <clears throat> I can go back here to the stack details. I can go to Terraform action and do an apply, right? And I would say, <clears throat> 
web apply job. And I'm going to use the plan that I used it, uh, that I executed before. So let's just uh, click on apply. <clears throat> Sorry. And then that's, uh, that will actually start uh, executing the, the Terraform uh, code, right? And gonna start executing the, uh, actually instantiated all the resources that I that was part of the plan. Okay, so again, you, you notice it, ten, it turned from green to in progress uh, in my stack. And we're gonna give a few uh, you know seconds here. I'm gonna start seeing some of the outputs uh, as part of the logs. Uh, here. All right, so there you go. So we start showing up the log files uh, and we start creating the, uh, creating the network, the VCN uh, got created, start creating my like internet gateways, security lists, uh, subnets, load balancer, uh, and start provisioning uh, some of the, the web servers too. So while that's going through that process, let's just go here uh, and take a look on the resources, right? If I go to the networking and look at the uh, virtual cloud networks, yeah, there you go. So I do have a VCN01 that it just got created, January 20, so that's the date. Uh, on that VCN, it created the subnet as well, created my route tables, um, created my secure list, uh, as part of this. So if I go back to the networking and look at the um, load balancer, let's see if the load balancer is underway. Yeah, load balancer. Yeah, it's here, it's say active. It's still, because it's still processing the, the web servers behind the scenes, right? I can see the load balancer I got uh, created. Let's just go take a look on the computing instances. And yeah, so I do have two web servers, web server 01, web server 02 up and running here as part of my, uh, my uh, as part of my, my, my application, right? So they're running two different fault domains. One was, was set it to run, to put it on fault domain one, another one in fault domain two. So they're all both using uh, availability domain three, okay? Uh, all right, so let's just go back to resource manager real quick. Look at the stacks. I think the stacks to you showing as um, visioning. Let's see. Oh, there you go, it finished. So the apply finished uh, and say it's complete, right? If I scroll all the way down, I can see that uh, 12 resources was added, was completed. And then like I, I mentioned on the output Terraform file, that I want to give me that the, I want the script to give me the output of my load balancer, my public IP load balancer. So let's just grab that public IP. And if we open up another browser here, let's just go. Okay, yeah, the load balancer is still going through uh, the health shack, and then we should we should see the 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 page here in a moment. So let's just go back here. And go back to the load balancer. Yeah, the load balancer is still going through the health shack just to make sure that the web servers are, are um, you know, connected and up and running. So we should have this showing in the middle. Okay, so while that's that's doing, let me see if there's any questions here on the chat real quick. Um, Let's see. Okay, so what indicates that resource manager to create res the resource in the proper order? VCN, load balancer, compute, et cetera. Et cetera. Th that's a great question. So this is actually not part of resource manager. Uh, this is actually part of Telform. So Telform is, is smart enough to understand that uh, what kind of resources should be created first, right? Uh, so the Terraform 
as a Terraform, he has a provider, which he, which is all cloud providers. They work with Terraform with HashCorp to write a provider. So we write a provider to Terraform that's called OCI provider. On that OCI provider, uh, when you rewrite the specific uh, resources that can be supported as part of Terraform, we have uh, we have to tell the Terraform uh, um, you know configuration during the development which resources will be uh, created first. What are the dependencies of that particular resource? And then when you execute Terraform, Terraform will create this graph uh, uh, internally that map all your resources and he knows like if I'm creating a computer resource, I won't be able to create a computer resource if I don't have network uh, up and running. And then the network uh, must be created first and the subnet must be created first. And then after that, the compute will do it. So it's actually part of the Terraform to understand this. So that's why I, I said at the beginning, you can have everything created in one single file uh, to execute or divided in multiple files because Terraform is smart enough to understand that all file that's named with .tf as an extension, extension uh, is part of Terraform. And then he's able to sort that out and put it in the order of execution, okay? Let's see another question here. Can the, can the source provider source provider also be on other Git repository? Uh, example, Git repository from Azure DevOps. Um, that's a great question. Uh, as of for now, resource manager is supporting the GitHub and GitLab uh, as, the, as, the, uh, as the source repository. I didn't play with Azure DevOps Git repository, but I can actually take a, a look on this and see if, the, if that's possible. But as of now, I, I say, no, I, I don't see that option available as a source provider uh, on resource manager. Uh, let's see, can the Oracle Git repo in Visual Builder Studio be used? Um, again, not, a, not as of now, we're just uh, resource managers using GitHub and GitLab, like the public ones. Uh, but I can definitely work with the, the resource manager uh, group to see what are the plans are to support, uh, you know, Visual Builder uh, as part of the Git repo there. Um, okay, so those are the two questions. Let's see if this is back online. Oh, there you go. Here's my here's my web server. Uh, so. As you can see, I have a, uh, you know, two web servers. If I refresh the screen, you can see it's changed from web server 01 to web server 02. It's actually the load balancer doing a round robin um, connection. And I do have, uh, inside, of a, uh, inside of that script that I'm executing as a cloud in it, I just have a script to execute few uh, queries uh, on the metadata of the, the web server just to display that information. So you can pick it up the private IP, the shape, the region that this particular server is up and running, the availability domain and the file domain. So it just give you that uh, information here and, and switch uh, along the lines, right? Okay. So uh, let's see another question here on the chat. How do you know that there are changes that needs to be handled before you run your automated process? I didn't know that there are changes that needs to be handled before you run the automated process. Uh, so I think the, the question might be if, if someone actually created something manually and I'm trying to run uh, automatically, like uh, automating that process, right? Uh, so that's a you know great question. Like uh, the, the rule of thumb is if you if you want to go automation, you go full automation, right? You you try to avoid as much as possible for people to go inside of the console and just trying to deploy things manually on this using the same resources and stacks that you you uh, you actually automating. So you try to keep everything out of automation. Everyone everyone that wants to create some sort of a, a a change, they have to go through that process of automation. They have to go through Terraform to actually make the change or uh, create a new new environment, right? So we always try to like switch to automation, go automation full from, from that angle, right? Uh, if you're using the same stack and then someone change something out of the stack manually, so the resource manager can give you an option. Uh, I don't have a demo here, but I'm just gonna show real quick uh, one option. You can run what we call the uh, the drift detection. 
So if someone changed my stack uh, manually, I went there and just changed my secure list for some reason because I had to on a rush, I have to do that change manually. I can run a drift detection and that can give me like, hey, this secure list was modified manually uh, inside, of the, inside of your stack. Do you want to adjust this? And then when you run this, you can adjust the, the, the configuration and that configuration that was executed manually is actually added as part of your uh, state file, right? And then your, your stack will, will, will be back in sync again, okay? So that's one, one way to, to prevent uh, this kind of situation, okay? All right, so let me see here. Um, the other thing I wanna show real quick is once I deployed everything, right? Uh, now, if I wanna destroy everything, it's very easy as well. I can just go to Terraform action, click destroy, everything gonna get destroyed, right? Uh, you can do that uh, if you want. Now you also can do chains, right? So if I, I'm using the repo, uh, let's go to a compute instance, for example, and let's just edit the file here on spot. So I wanna just edit, and I'm gonna change the web server. I'm gonna change the name of the web server. Let's just pick up here the display name. I'm gonna change this to web server zero uh, three, right? Uh, just changing the display name, nothing else, right? Uh, let's just commit that change. And yeah, so I changed this to the web server 03. So now if we go back to my stack and I do a Terraform action, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit you know, over it. I'm just gonna do apply. I could do a plan first, just to make sure they pick up the change. I'm gonna do apply. Let's just see if that will actually pick it up as well. So I'm gonna do uh, HA web app, it's called change. And I'm gonna do this here, All right? Let's just, before I do, let's just make sure I make that commit. Yeah, okay, Web Server 3, I change it. So let's just go to apply. Um, so when I do that, um, the expected behavior will be that the, the, the Web Server 02 name will change to Web Server 03, right? Uh, and as I just changed the display name, I don't have to rebuild that machine. I don't have to destroy or recreate it. It's just a display name change that the Terraform will handle that for me. Right. So let's just take a few minutes, few seconds here. All right, so it says, okay, one change, one thing changed, right? Uh, which was the change uh, on my, on my web server, right? Web server, um, my web server entry, right? So let's just see here, if I refresh the page, yeah, there you go. So now you can see it's showing web server 03 as part of the change, uh, not showing web server 02 anymore. So we changed the instance name for web server 03. So if I go to my compute instances, I can see, uh, yeah, it changed to web server 03, right? So nothing actually got destroyed. It's just a basic change that I could execute it. So that's the beauty of connecting the source control of GitHub for your Terraform scripts uh, with resource manager. So you can control the configuration of scripts through the, the, the GitHub repo. You have multiple people like doing pull requests and you're validating this and have the execution uh, uh, under resource manager, right? Can you automate it more than that? Yeah, you can You can do that. You can build up a pipelines if you want using um, CI CD like Jenkins or any other tool to actually execute some uh, resource manager for you. So while you're doing some change inside of your code, the pipeline can automatically pick up that change and do an execution uh, for you uh, inside of resource manager. So there's, there's a way to automate that uh, as well, right? Yeah, that was actually, that was the demo. Uh, I hope I was able to give you, you know, from start to, uh, you know, to create the, creating the Terraform scripts all the way to connecting them to resource manager. Uh, we can definitely set up more sessions in the future where we can walk through like 
actually writing some of the Terraform scripts, if that's the case, and showing some some uh, of best practices there. But that's that's the the overview of using uh, Terraform uh, with Resource Manager. So let me see if there's any other questions here on the chat um, that I can answer. Is your Git repo public for everyone to use your Terraform demo to practice and learn? Absolutely, yeah. So I created this ORM simple web. Uh, you can you can access this. So I can put it here on the chat. Let's see if I have a chat here. Uh, and you can fork their repo and use that scripts like no problem at all. Like you can you can use that for learn um, as you go. I do have more repos. If you look at my my GitHub account, I do have more Terraform repos there that you can take a look as well. If you're interested in you know look at some of those things there, feel free. Uh, it's all it's all available. Yeah. All right. So I don't think we have any other questions. Thank you, Sanjay. I think Sanjay covered most of the questions on the Q and A uh, as we we went through. Hope that was a useful session. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any other questions on the chat. I'll, I'll still here. Or if you want to, let's do this. I have 24 people. If you want to open up your mic and ask a question, uh, you can do too. So we don't have a, a huge crowd. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. All right, just one here that pop up on, on the q and I still wonder how to handle a user data cloud in it where I have to install Oracle software like Java, Instant Client, Instant Client and, and other stuff, right? Is there a way to automatically download this stuff? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question, right? Um, it, that's, yeah. So when you're trying to install things, that's when you try to install like packages or RPMs or, you know, zip files uh, as part of the automation, you have to have a, a source, right? Where are you going to pick up that information? Uh, I, I can definitely rely, and I understand your concern, like you have to download something from from like uh, e-delivery e on, on Oracle and just download that client and then make that client available to a repo so you can add it as part of the cloud need script. Uh, that, that kind of, you know, takes some time to do it. But in a way, it is it is like the way you automate it, you have to publish that information in some way that Terraform can actually download it and, and pick it up that. I usually put my, like, as I'm using here on the script, uh, let's just go back and show this again. I'm actually using object storage to handle like configuration files or if I have to install something, uh, I'll actually put it there. Uh, if I can actually get, of course, RPMs from the local repos on the EM, uh, EM repositories of the operating system, I'll definitely go on that route, right? But that's, in some extent, you have to actually provide some source to pick up that information. It could be from an FTP server internally that you're using or, uh, you know, a web server where you're putting all your files there. You have to have some way to actually download it and pick it up that, that information from there. But I can send your feedback to the to the Oracle um, package, especially right if they could have some sort of an integration um, that can be exposed to cloud cloud in need. That'll be that'll be awesome. I'm going to save a lot of time. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I don't see more questions. All right, uh, yeah, we just have five minutes left. I would say thank you everyone for attending. Um, this session was recorded. Uh, Marcy was recording that session. We're gonna publish that session later on if you wanna go back and watch it to see and to gather more information. Uh, yeah, please please do so. And if you have any questions, just gonna bring up my um, my email here real quick. Uh, yeah, it's flavio.pereira at oracle.com. If you have any, any questions, you wanna send me an email directly, uh, please do so. Uh, more than welcome to uh, to answer uh, any questions. Okay. Thank you, Flavio. Um, yeah. I just wanted to mention that I put in the chat a link to get our trial if you want to try things out. Um, so feel free to do that. And uh, appreciate a great presentation and demo today. I hope it was useful for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks and so have a great day.